Now we're out here in a corner of our property where we can shed hunt a little bit and get away with it. I don't feel like we're spooking deer that much. I have a hard time not looking around for antlers while I'm standing here, but I wanted to discuss a 70% rule when it comes to shed hunting. You know, a lot of people really wonder about the timing of when to get out. I saw a good friend, Chad Garteski with Weiss Realty. He had posted a, a picture of a nice buck with half rack. And he's like, when, when should I go out and look for the second half? And now Chad is an incredible shed hunter. So I know he, he would have his strong opinion and answer to that, but he's just kind of throwing it out there. And it's something that we all wrestle with, especially on private land. In private land, I'd like to talk about the 70% rule. But before I get into that, if you're hunting public land, if you're hunting permission land, we know a lot of people that uh, just, they have tons of permission to actually shed hunt on, even though they can't deer hunt on those same properties. They just like finding antlers and they'll walk miles and miles, 10, 20, 30 miles on a weekend, almost every weekend looking. Well, if you're looking on public land, who cares if you spook the, the deer? Because they're probably running back and forth on big public land chunks. Um, you, you find them here today, you go back in there the next day, you find them in another place. And so the deer get pushed around, it's very random. But on private land, there's always that thought, or on a land where you're only shed hunting a small parcel, doesn't matter if it's three or 400 acres or, or 20, that you push that buck off and you're not gonna find his antlers. So if you have the luxury of cameras and you're watching the deer herd like we do on a daily basis, we have lots of cameras out, we can get a great feel for how many uh, antlers are actually falling at a current time. It's very deceiving because people will talk about the antlers are dropping, need to get out shed hunting. When really it could have just been they saw it from a couple bucks or half racks or no racks, but you're not considering the rest of the herd. So we get a really good look. And I can tell you from year to year, it's about the same. People will say, and it's the same for a given area. It could be completely different in a wooded section, non-ag, no good food, then they're gonna drop a lot earlier. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's central Kentucky, and if there's not a lot of good food and it's big woods, they're gonna drop earlier. If you have good ag land, good food plots, good food sources, good cover, good browse during, all that plays into it. And I'll show you, I'll talk about um, an example, the Cousineau Research Facility up in the UP of Michigan, they found the supplementally fed, pellet fed deer would drop their antlers closer to March and the deer right outside the enclosure, the same deer herd in the same location, same 225 average inch snowfall region, they dropped more early January, late December. So big difference between deer that had better food and you see that anywhere. Now in here, the 70% rule, I wanna see that about 70% of the bucks have no antlers. And, and really you think, man, I gotta wait a long time to see that, but it, it happens fast. I think right now we've gone from 80, 90% holding a week, 10 days ago, it's February 12th right now. So we're probably at more like 60% holding right now, maybe 50%. We don't have that far to go, and right now it's exponential. You get, a, you get some of the big old bucks that are dropping because they're worn down, they're maybe sickly, they might have an injury, they'll drop first. We had uh, Barry around here that's been limping. He dropped December 18th, 19th, right around there. We have video of him with him on the 18th, without him on the 19th. That 70% rule, what it allows you to do is get out, and if you are pushing deer around, Maybe you'll have a minimal impact then as opposed to hitting it this weekend, next weekend, next weekend, just over and over again. You hit it once, there's 70% down, and it's just all, of course, guesstimation. But that'll put you in a position to find a lot of sheds. And if you do spook deer off, you're only hitting it that one time, you come back another week later, and you can really vacuum up a lot of the sheds that are on your land without going in too early and push those deer off to your neighbors. And we talk about those exceptions, again, Barry, where he's dropped his antlers early. Then you go in in early January and you go look for those sheds and you, you go in and then you have a month for that property to heal. You look around here, traditional shed timing, and it's no different this year, around this location, opposite of what, when I was up in the UP of Michigan, half the bucks would have dropped in some manner, either both or half of them by uh, January 1st, early January. It was completely wilderness, not a great food source, lots of cold and snow, it's just stress, nutritional stress, habitat stress. We're here, it's more towards that 70% rule is gonna to apply to around the end of February, March 1st. That's a great time where you have both it, a lot of antlers on the ground. And so we're just a couple weeks away. We're really not that far and that's the traditional time. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. We'll be right back. I really want you to check out 
Our seed company, Pure Wildlife Blends, we changed the name from WHS to reflect Pure, what our seed's all about and our company's all about. Right now is a great time to be putting down our perennial, our green max traffic blend for trails and around the water holes, our switchgrass, our summer soil explosion. It's amazing what people are buying right now, even going all the way into the fall, getting all their seed available right now. We'll have it all year though, you don't have to rush. Check it out while you're at it, while you're on the website, check out our how you design your white tail parcel. It's a great web class and some of the other ones. We have lots to offer, including the books too. Make sure you don't miss out. Now back to the video. If you don't have a bunch of cameras out in the woods like we do, go by your traditional timing. Don't fall victim to what you see online and people are saying, boy, they're really dropping right now. You got to get out and look. That'll really lead you astray. So the 70% rule, kind of think about that. That 70% rule will apply year to year on an annual basis. So it'll be right about that same time and that'll put you on track to find in those sheds. We're looking for sheds primarily. Just a couple tips on where to find them. We still find on client properties where they jump fences, go across ditches, all those crossings. We find a lot in food sources. And food sources, you have to look at if those deer are hitting your food sources during the daylight, that means they feel pretty comfortable in and around those food plots. That means they're probably bedding close. If they're not hitting your food sources till the middle of the night, that means they're traveling a long ways to get there. They could have dropped anywhere on the way there. Their bedding areas during the daytime and where they spend their daylight hours is a long ways away. And so you have to consider that food sources are great if they're being hit during the daylight. I'll have people say, well, they, we find hardly any in our food plots. So that's a bad sign because that means the deer don't like your food plots during the daylight. And if that's, and they're not really spending that much time there or bedding nearby, and in that case, you're probably not gonna find a lot of antlers either. We've had times where we found half our antlers within 50 yards of food plots or on the food plots. And, uh, and that's a pretty good thing because it speaks you know, pretty highly of you and how much you actually spook off your food plots. And then at the same time, the bedding areas. Bedding areas are awesome. Those concentrations of pellets, especially if you know where does and fawns are at and then going a little bit further in and finding those buck bedding. And then I also like areas like this that are really thick there's a lot of overhanging brush, a lot of stems, and it's that transition area, that's that thick transition area between high quality big food and bedding down here. So bedding, food, the thick transition areas between fence crossings, ditch crossings, observe, observe the 70% rule. And uh, you know, of course, if you don't have all the cameras out like we do right now and we have the luxury of, then uh, just go by that traditional timing of that 70% and you'll be on track to finding sheds this spring and every spring beyond.